What an amazing... Uh... What an amazing night to be a part of. You probably all know, you probably all fans, but The Goodies was uh, written and performed by Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Bill Oddy from 1970 to 1982. And I think that its spirit sums up the kind of like anarchic, chaotic feel of that, of that decade. And now, for the first time, all 7,569 episodes are available <laughs> <laughs> to own uh, in a single package. There's a prize for anyone that manages to watch them all before death. But there's loads. Um, <laughs> And I'm now going to interview for an hour uh, the three members of the goodies. It's going to be a challenge because every single one of us on stage tonight, including me, is now wearing medically prescribed hearing aids. So this could be... <laughs> have a sort of slight Samuel Beckett feel to it. We'll see how it goes. Please, please welcome Graham, Tim and Bill. <laughs> I'm going to ask, the first thing I want to ask about is, going back over these and watching them again has been really great. And I was struck by the fact that there's a really, there's a really obvious dynamic in the characters, which are, I mean, I'm interested in to what extent it was contrived and worked out. It does seem, it re seems to reflect a social division where you have the upper classes, the middle classes and the working classes. You sort of have <laughs> the, the Tories, the Liberals, the, the Labour, Labour okay. sort of yeah. <laughs> Did you make a plan? Did you think that the, we need to, uh, to exaggerate these differences to create a dynamic, or were they there anyway? We had to, we had to have the three, so that any subject, you could have the attitude of that people. Unfortunately, I had to be the Tory. <laughs> Tough, <laughs> because I've got a double barrel name, which is embarrassing enough anyway. But I always think I, I've disliked my character more than any of the others. Yeah. But the only thing I had in common, which I always say, was that I'm a coward like he was. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I... It's a question we used to get asked at the time, which is quite interesting, where people would say, to what extent are these actually based on your own characters, your own selves? And I have to admit, I always said, uh, Tim is. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's the only one he did. that I had seen in a suit and tie at that stage. <laughs> The only person in the world that you've seen. Like... No, no, no. <laughs> and Graham also. I mean, uh, I, I don't think the, the leather patches on the elbows, he's not a stranger to those, is he? No, no, it's <laughs> the leather patches on the knees that used to worry me. <laughs> it's all made explicit in that episode where you're walled in by the concrete, where you, yeah. you sort of take dictatorial control of the situation, yeah. Graham, and say that you have to have a labouring class <laughs> and the sort of technical. Class. Yeah, well, yeah, then... my character was very much technical based and yeah. science based, and so was uh, was very logical. And if you look back, over, he always made sense. Yeah. <laughs> you would think that, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, not Still... mor he's not a moral figure either, is he? He's driven by the Graham Garden character. He's <laughs> driven by cruel, practical logic rather than he's and, not sensible. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have a value system. Actually, like, no, you, he doesn't. No. He was a mad scientist. Mad scientist, yeah. Yeah. scientist yeah. basically, is what yeah. he was. He, he, Graham has got many talents. We have to admit, both Tim and I, that Graham can do all sorts of things that we can't do. Well, that used to be true anyway, but. But it, it was his skills at things which actually really made him stand apart and dictate what he did in the shows, you know, because he, he was a brilliant uh, magician, various He's things not like dead, that. you know, he keeps saying what? he was. <laughs> 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 it's not a tribute to him. <laughs> Watch. Yeah. <laughs> um, he and is, he was also he very cruel yeah. in a very, very, yeah. very dispassionate way. That's that's what was my favourite bits of Graham. I mean, if there's a very simple example, if there was a dog, for example, to be sent somewhere, he'd have it all wrapped up in brown paper. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I love that element of cruelty. That's but one logic. Of the, hmm? But logical. Not really, no. <laughs> it's a good way to send a dog, isn't it? <laughs> See, I was wondering to what extent these characters were contrived, but seeing the three of you together now, <laughs> they're clearly not. They're just... <laughs> it's just how you... 
<laughs> Graham still doesn't understand what was funny about that. <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was a kind of drama with two yeah. <laughs> ridiculous people hampering his plans. <laughs> true, yeah. He was the mad scientist, yeah. basically what he was, and he was mad most of the time. But mm. So yeah. were we. <laughs> but, you, but there wasn't. Was there a was there a planning stage where you thought we need to we need to make these sort of polarizers? Because I, I some, another thing that's interesting about it compared to, to the, you know the, the characters have obvious sort of political positions, but in the modern world, well certainly in the last decade. Everything sort of drifted towards the centre, didn't mm. it? And I don't know what it wouldn't. They wouldn't be as immediately obvious stereotypes of social polarisation to people. It, you know? it, uh, I mean, it was really. I think when it comes down to it, in a way, it's dictated by the costumes. Right. I don't mean what we happen to have in the wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What you turned <laughs> no, up Hello. Where? What's this? A grass skirt? All right. I'll be a Maori or something. No, it didn't yeah. work like that. Um, but uh, I think. I think. I, by nature anyway, was a sort of sub hop hippie. Yeah. I was going to say a hoppy. What's a hoppy? It sounds fun, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I dressed that way anyway. So, it, I mean, I'd chosen the character by the costume. Um, it's not quite so true of these two, because obviously theirs was a very caricature specific costume. Well, there's a sort of family relationship as well. I mean, it looks like, looking at it again, it looks like mother, father, and a little babe, naughty baby. <laughs> I wondered whether that was something. You're hoping to come back, are you? <laughs> no, I was wondering whether that... I'd just like to say he was a mistake. <laughs> I mean, is that why the two of you stayed together? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> in a way, yeah. I think that's true, but the ch actually childishness, yeah. of course, is a very key thing in the whole series and was often misconstrued in many ways. And I think it was Frank Muir made one of the remarks, which and I think we all treasure. He said, it's the childlike world of the goodies, not the childish yeah. world of the goodies. And I think that was a really clear way of putting it. You know, it's like being a cartoon or something. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't self-consciously drop the names of famous philosophers and historians in the way that a lot of your contemporaries... Whom are you getting at? <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's much more honest than that, I think. It, it's, you, you don't, you're not trying to uh, prove to an audience that you are educated by making illusions. You're expecting the work to stand on its own. Well, no, they, they just drop the names of the philosophers. Yeah. We attack the philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all know who you're talking about here, this insidious comparison, but I... Um, well, I thought I was trying to dig you out of a hole, cos I felt you... Why? Were, I, no, I felt you... I'm, were, I'm no, not no. going in a hole, I promise yeah. you, no. Uh, <laughs> but there was this thing, we'll uh, we might as well get it out of the way, that we were always getting this thing about Python or us, and the ridiculous thing was that there were a lot of people felt they had to make a choice, you know, and you said, well, watch them both, for Christ's sake, you no, know. it was like, you know, do you prefer the Beatles? Or the goodies. Yeah. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna ask about this later actually, but given that it's <laughs> shift the running order. <laughs> I, think that, I think that when the dust settles, the goodies legacy will stand in the way that <laughs> the trivia of the Beatles will be blown away. <laughs> but, I mean what, what what is interesting is that um, to, to my generation. The goodies was the, was the, the main comedy show. I mean, the, your viewing figures were enormous, yeah. Yeah. But, like, like massive, and that was, people. It was the thing. We, we, people weren't, you know, the, those other people from the satire boom who oh. were on late at night were getting a fraction of the figures you were. So you well, were in the, you were massively in the public consciousness. I, I try. I'm always trying to come up with pretentious little ways of summing up this situation, and my my <laughs> stuff <with> it. Um, <laughs> and uh, my one with that was, I said, the Python make albums and we make singles and what i meant with it's quite clever it's quite clever because <laughs> you don't sell that many of the albums but people say really hate love them you know yeah. but with a single you sell an awful lot and in fact of course we we crossed over into the music world yeah. did sell a lot of singles and so on and so forth and i think it, it it plays against you in a way that sort of thing well yeah i mean you, you literally did make singles didn't you i mean yeah yeah you were yeah. in you were on all these other programs as well not just the goodies we were really aware of you being on top of the pops and oh i hope he'd forgotten all 
No, I'm going to. I'm going to. We were prouder of that than anything else. Come on. Well, that's that, that's. <laughs> what... Top of the pops with pants, people. What yeah. more could you ask? Well, <laughs> it, it does come back to the different sorts of characters, I think, because you. One of the, the subtext of Bills, I think, is that you feel. You feel like the the character and you were a sort of frustrated bohemian. He felt like he should be doing something else. And certainly, I, I wondered why. I wondered. There seems to be a disproportionate amount of detail and work that's gone into the music for the goody, given that it's there as background music. The people you're playing with on it. Were I amazing. hope. I hope. The, I hope you felt it was worth it. Huh? I hope you felt it was worth it. Yeah. We were. I had you it's in made mind. Made him go deaf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I love the music, though I speak as someone Thank with you. severely reduced hearing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, unfortunately, as these two and most of London, if not the country, know, um, give me half a chance and I'll rattle on about it for a couple of hours. Well, let, let, let's, come, well let's, let's come back to it, because it does... It's okay. interesting... No, that, when, again, talking about the character breakdowns, Tim, you do sort of... You, you fit, of the three of you, you fit that, the, the, you, the, you're the most obvious choice for the upper-class stereotype. This is the, 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 the details I pulled off Wikipedia. You were Footlights president. It's not possible to be more Oxbridge than to be Footlights president. <laughs> so was Graham. Graham was as well. That's been removed from Wikipedia, then. <laughs> <laughs> By me, actually. <laughs> It also says you were expelled from a private school at the age of five. Five and a half. Five and a half. <laughs> Come from a legal family. My mother said, dear, you weren't expelled, you were asked to leave. Right. <laughs> Are you able to say... What did you do? ..what it was you did that was... Well, so... there were really basically only two of us in this girls' school. Oh, right. Robert and myself, and our mistress was called Miss Meller who became Miss Smeller and Miss Smelly in no time at all. <laughs> and also, because every Thursday, the girls would go and do brownies. And Robert and I had to go and... Actually, it sounds terrible, go and do brownies. But anyway, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy, Tim, he's done a brownie. Anyway, I, it was awkward, so I was asked to leave. Right. Just because, because there was only two boys? It basically. So was it wasn't, you weren't expelled for some crime, then? Just a crime of gender? I'd rather not say <laughs> on okay. television. All right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> you thought of it, though, didn't you? That's the thing. On... on... Now, he'd say, Graham, again, you, you've, you've masked this well in the character of your sort of middle-class people. You went, to, you went to Repton, a top public school, famous for the tradition of fagging and cock of the school. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it was called? I couldn't find... Yeah, what was that? The cock I've no idea. I've never <laughs> heard of that. <laughs> Is that Wikipedia again? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, yeah. Clarkson went there, <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson. He said, during his <laughs> yeah. time at Repton, he was forced to lick the toilets clean, to defecate in his tuck box and to cut up his clothing, and that was just by the teachers. <laughs> so, it's, um... <laughs> but was it a very severe environment? <laughs> Only for him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't, you can't say that you're... You were driven into comedy through childhood cruelty or anything like that? Um, well, no, no, I was driven into cruelty through childhood cruelty. <laughs> Not into comedy, no. Right. <laughs> and then, the, then the, the music stuff is obviously very important to you. And, yeah. And it's, it, again, it's, the, the character we feel was this sort of... And, it, and, don't I get a chance to say what school it went to? Come on, I'm rather proud of it. Yeah, but it's not, attached, not, not, got, not got a stereotype attached to it. Um, well, they're not yeah. the stereotype. It was not it a is. stereotype, but go on, go very on. Very smart school, King Edward's Birmingham. Yes, it was a very smart school. Yeah. King Edward's school in Birmingham. So that was the, when I grew up in Birmingham. That, they were always the girls who wanted to go out with the ones from King Edward's. The girls? Yeah, they were the clever ones. Next door. Yeah, yeah. You had the boys... We needn't tell them this. They can dream. The boys' school there and the girls' school there and just a little... Were they all midgets? ...gap in between. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm nervous, that's why. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it was, it was a very high-powered school, but I absolutely loved it. But it wasn't, technically speaking, a public school and it wasn't a boarding school. That's one of the differences. You, you were both boarders, weren't you? Then? But they used to go to the headmaster's conference, though. Be technical. Yes, I know, but that doesn't matter. Do you think, do you think there's something about about coming from the Midlands that gives you a certain perspective? Do you feel? Do you think you always feel like an outsider to some extent? You're not from the south. You're not from the north. And also, there's no cultural credit attached to having a, a Midlands accent. That's a, that's a... <laughs> no, it's, I just... Is there a large chip on your shoulder? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you come from the middle, you can't be an outsider, surely. No. <laughs> That's, a, that's exactly the cold, harsh logic. <laughs> <bit>. <laughs>
Yeah, it's water. Uh, what do you think, Tim? Uh, Tim is from Derbyshire, basically. Yes. So. Buxton. Buxton, yes. That's got an opera house, though. It's it got has. an opera house, it's got beautiful I scenery. I used to hate water as a child and always forced it, and now people buy it in bottles. Yeah. <sighs> it was just bubbling out of the ground, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. They used to wash the buses with it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> Mind you, they were very clean buses, to be fair. I, I can't personally say that I had a great affinity to Birmingham as such. You know, I, I just went to the two or three places I like. like but you've gone on their walk of fame, I notice. You're, aren't you on, isn't there a star for you in the floor? Is it? Is it where the school? No, and by the old ATV studios, aren't you in the... I don't know. It's nice news if I am. What, along with Buster Keaton? Chris Tarrant. The Queen. <laughs> <and all> that... <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay, I'm sorry, I thought I assumed there was. No, it might be true, it might be true. They'd have told you, wouldn't they? <laughs> we got uh, big, big, big things to compete with in Birmingham and at my school, Tolkien. Yeah. Yeah, that's heavy, yeah. Tolkien went to my school, you don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> true. <Yeah>. Um... <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so when you when you went to pitch this, I, I think you'd, you'd you'd all work together in various combinations between finishing university and doing the goodies on all these famous radio shows. And what 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 was the original pitch for the to uh, to the um, who was in who was in charge of comedy? Michael Mills. Michael Mills. Yeah. Well, originally, the there was a, a show that Graham and I were doing called Broaden Your Mind, which was an encyclopedia of there, was just an excuse for different sketches. Yeah. And we did two programmes of that. Bill was in quite a lot of it. And then they said, we'd like another series, but could it be slightly different, meaning could it be a lot funnier? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, about the same time, the Python started. The thing with the sketch show is you, you've got a subject, you reach a climax, then, then you've got to start all over yeah. again, punchline. So the idea, well, Python's got round it brilliantly, by usually Graham Chapman coming on saying, this is getting silly, let's do something completely different. Yeah. And we thought, well, if we could keep the sketches there but link them with a storyline, then we wouldn't have those ups and downs. That was the basic idea. Yeah, it, it? had... Yeah. It, was, it was the influence, I suppose, of the shape of sitcoms, which tend to have that storyline. But, as Tim said, the, the comedy itself was more appropriate in a... In a, in a um, Silly. Um, in a sketch show. Yeah, yeah so. silly comedy. Um, we, the basic pitch was three blokes who do anything, anywhere, anytime. Yeah. I mean, and Michael Mills people. said, well, yeah. that's an idea I get on my desk every week. <laughs> <laughs> that and the German version of Dad's Army. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I'm also, I'd, I'd said... like to see that, don't you? <laughs> no, he, he said, but I think you guys could, could uh, pull it off, so uh, go and make a series. Well, in the, in the so first we episode... said, yeah, we'll go and beefy plus up our German accents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the first episode, the, the premise is made clear. In the Beef It, the Tower of London episode, it's re dealt with very quickly. We understand that Tim's aunt has left you a, yeah. a, an amount of money. You've de designed this lab stroke sort of mm. bat cave den that they live in. <laughs> yes. And then Bill has, does the, puts adverts up everywhere. It's not really referred to again much for the next 12 years. That no. is. <laughs> You feel like that'll do. We don't really know how they've met or who they are. Yeah. It's kind of admirable lack of detail, I felt. It just sort of I speeds on into the setting. You the know that you're, as a writer, um, or writers doing comedies, you know things are getting worrying and thin if you start having flashbacks yeah. and looking back, you know, it, you, nearly every sitcom that's ever been has lasted for about four years, which is usually three years too many, and they say, what are we going to do in the last show? And they say, uh, oh, I know, we'll all go to Spain. And they always <laughs> go somewhere completely different. Yeah. And so I, I don't think we ever felt that we wanted well, to we go. We did anywhere. that in about episode two, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I read, I read somewhere that one of, the, one of the inspirations for it was this idea that around that time there were a lot of programmes like The Persuaders or yeah. the, the Avengers yeah. where there were sort of groups of do-gooders who seemed to be allowed to operate outside yeah. the law. Yeah. And one, one piece that I found, someone said that you had the idea for the name, Bill, <laughs> oh. whilst getting out of the bath. What was it that you saw getting out of the bath? <laughs> 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 Are there any children here? <laughs> <laughs> 
it's a fact of again comedy in general and records and so on and so forth that you can spend far more time trying to come up with the name of something than actually doing whatever it is, making a record and making a programme. And so we had days, you know. And um, Python did the same thing. They came up, what, what was it? Our stretching time. Our stretching time. Mm -hmm. Yes, wonderful. And <laughs> and we we had the same sort of thing. And I came up with. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing even to say it. Super Chaps Three. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like a bad translation of the name of the video. <laughs> 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 like oh, the Super Chap 3, yes, yes. Lundle, lundle, Very lundle, popular lundle, in Norway, or something like yeah. that. And I, I was so embarrassed and uh, they were so um, um, scathing of me. I thought, it's, it's up to me, I've got, to, I've got to do something better. And it was one of those things I can only say, I woke up in the middle of the night, in bed, and suddenly thought, Goodies, and that was it. The goodies, as opposed to the baddies, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and it's, it sounds like it sounds like a, a group of something. Yeah, that was also worryingly intentional. <laughs> you probably, you'd probably see this thing slowly seeping through. That whenever I had a chance to sneak a bit of music of one sort on a music illusion, then I would do it. And yes, goodies was meant to echo with monkeys and. Beatles <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rolling Stonies <laughs> and all that sort of thing. I was, I was surprised to read that the first episode went out at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night, because it always oh. seems... Well, that was the sort of time we were going to go out, always. Yeah, it was but... never a family programme, it was a late-night programme. Mm. But the great thing was, in a way, is that it was originally our best time we got our best audiences was 9 o'clock, opposite the 9 o'clock news, right. like, not the 9 o'clock news. And that was the best time of all, because it... It allowed families to watch it, but people come up to me that look about 90 and say, I was allowed to stay up to watch you, yeah, which is incredibly depressing. I, was, I, remember the I remember the first one I saw, it was about six, and Donna, who was in my class at school, was sitting on a, on a desk eating a whole a biscuit, huh. saying, are you going to watch the goodies tonight? It's, it's the Beanstalk one. This would have been February 75. <laughs> I didn't know what the goodies were, but I was anxious to impress... Donna. This woman who had a biscuit, and so I said, <laughs> "Yes, I am." And I went home and watched it, and I couldn't, I couldn't believe that such a thing was allowed to be on. It was so, <laughs> so I, I, I was so happy that these, that something like that was being made in the world. It seemed like, it seemed so crazy and fun, and there must have been so many people that had that experience of coming across it. Have you uh, met Donna since? No, I don't know what no. she's doing. <laughs> I'd like to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's biscuits backstage. <laughs> 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 but no, just but it, it, it sort of it's interesting that it could it could build up the cult that it did in an age where people weren't sharing clips online of the work there weren't things going viral but a lot of the clips used to get shown on things like like there'd be requests on programs early on in the daytime yeah. wouldn't it? it sort of leaked into the leaked forwards in time into the Public consciousness. Kids would ask to see clips of it on kids' shows. Oh yes, the public. Yeah. Yeah. Ask Aspel or whatever it was called. Wasn't it? Yeah. Ask Aspel. Hello, yeah. Jimmy. The seventies was actually. The seventies was actually. The seventies was actually quite an interesting time. In fact, I was having a lunch with Jack D and his daughter in, in Bristol. She's studying history there, and I said, "What are you studying?" She said, "The seventies." <laughs> So, which is which is basically us. So we are we're historical. <laughs> I suppose for really, it's to do with a program being successful has to have an atmosphere which you can. It's just like a record. I really do think it is. You know, you instantly know. Graham made a very sage remark yeah. some years ago and said, <laughs> "You can Many say years. one, but still." <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he said, "Somebody said it was either him or somebody else who said." You hear the goodies theme somewhere, you know, and people go, that's the goodies. And you know what the programme was yeah. just by the sort of sound of the music itself, the silly sound effects, and my voice saying, you're ruining my bloody song! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, found, um, I found a thing online which was extracts from the script of the first show which was really interesting, the way that it described precisely what the room was going to be like. It was a very clear idea on paper of what the room was going to be like. And then at the point where you go into one of the speeded-up bits, 
uh, well, I think it's the first time you get on the triple yeah. seater oh, bike. Oh God, yeah. It says scene two, film undercranked, song over. And there's a very clear description of how this is going to, how you're going to physically achieve the effect by undercranking the film of making this have that silent movie quality. Uh, and the, it, so it seems like it was r really f in the forefront of your minds. This there was silent comedy cut. Absolutely, and there was one flaw in the stage directions at that point, which was. The next thing was, they ride off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> it, that should have been... Didn't. They fall. They fall off. <laughs> to be honest, that's one of the enjoyable things about the slapstick in the goodies, is that it's clearly beyond your ability. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a lot of people being physically, obviously harmed. Yeah, I absolutely. watched one again today, the, the, the bun fight one, where you, <sighs> you try to fall off a, a, a toy donkey, and you have no training in that whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite badly hurt. Doing Graham is magnificent to that sort of yeah. thing, and we thought he was immune. You know, we yeah, thought yeah. he could fall yeah. over and he would never be hurt because he knew what he was doing. Well, one day we had a, <laughs> a stunt man come along to do one or two things that were too dangerous, and the stunt man went off with Graham, and Graham said, "Show me what to do. You know, to do fall. I've got to fall." Um, and the stunt man said, "Well, you've got this thing which you." It's like a cushion type thing. So we strap on your back underneath your coat and then it'll be fine. So Graham starts filming. He's, he's on this donkey, as you say, an no, immovable... No, it was his death. It what? Was being shot by the uh, tomato sauce bit. <laughs> as you do. I thought it was the... Oh, no, it was. It was, yeah. It's the same show, show you watch this yeah, afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Different show. Prudence and it had same elbow show. pads as well. Anyway, there he is on the donkey. No, he's not. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've thrown me now. There he was, and eventually he gets squirted with tomato sauce, if you remember it. But the thing is, he's supposed to do this fantastic um, fall backwards. Now, that's going to be dangerous, you know, to do it backwards, which is why he had in, in some instruction to have this pillow on his back. And we go for the take, squirty, squirty. Graham goes up into the air, almost in slow motion, turns round... <laughs> 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 and comes down, boom, flat on his face. And oh, did we laugh? No. <laughs> I think we still are, are we? <laughs> I think, but that, well, that's one of the things that is that is still really funny about those the, the speeded up slapstick sequences is their the the technical expertise in terms of editing and special effects mm -hmm. isn't there for you to cheat anything. No. And if it had been 10, 15 years later, things would have been tweaked. And what they're funny in the same way as the old silent films are. Yeah. It's probably the it's probably the last time in TV that you were at, in genuine danger and at risk. And <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. You can see that it's there's not too much. There's little bits of tweaking of film going. I yeah, mean, people, as you said. People who do it um, digitally and so on and so forth really couldn't believe that some of the stuff we had to use, how primitive it was. Yeah. One of the catchphrases when we were filming was, mind the wires! <laughs> and that meant that there was a cable or something, or there was a, um, an invisible fishing line or something going across the shot, and we're going to pull it and something's going to run across like that, you know. And anybody who goes over it will garrot themselves, if you, you know, be careful. Um, so there were things like that which it was so basic. That's all we could do. What we found was that if we got stuntmen, we didn't want them to do it because they knew how to get round it, whereas when we did it, you could see it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it did hurt. You could see <laughs> that it hurt and it was a time-consuming struggle. <laughs> well, people say you must have loved riding that trandom, as we call yeah, it. Yeah. <gasps> and it was the most unpleasant thing we've ever been on done. To start with, it was a tandem with Bill sitting on the back. And you think about it, it was a tandem... Graham and I are going right, left, Bill's going wherever he feels. So yeah, Bill, it it Bill had, was just luggage. He was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it had no free wheel and no brake. Yeah. So we would have to get to try to move 20 feet across the scene, but then the, something would go, wouldn't oh, it? No, but you know, I mean, if you do a show now, uh, you have a risk <laughs> assessment, <laughs> yeah. which is probably, well, the goodies would be about three times as long as the script. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did a voiceover for an animation recently and got a script assessment thing which said uh, it'll be recorded in a studio with cables on the floor. Trip hazard. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, yeah, we wouldn't be able to do it. We now, wouldn't would be we? allowed to do it. No, no, you wouldn't have been. You wouldn't yeah. not be allowed to make those programs. No. No. I think that's true. I think an awful lot of the programs that 
whatever it's called, health and safety and that sort of thing, wouldn't have let us do. Definitely. And rightly so. I mean, we <laughs> risked our lives yeah. frequently <laughs> for the have... nearest of chuckles. We're still here, though, Bill. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have... Look, we're, I'm going to ask about some individual uh, shows and we'll see if anything comes up. Um, Kit and Kong is a really good example of the sorts of things you're talking about, of different film techniques being cut together. Yeah of special effects, of ill-prepared stunts, all, all cut together. I know that the version we've got isn't the original, it's a sort of slightly remixed version that was for the Montreux submission, yeah. but, uh, the, I mean, that... that to, to attempt that in um, 1971, the, 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 the CGI wasn't there, the models weren't there, it, was, it must have been... I mean, what, what... Well, funnily enough, it, I... As it happens, it was me, I suppose, had, had a, an audition, accidental audition for that idea, because I was writing for Ronnie Barker at the time, on and off. He wrote most of his stuff himself, but I would hand in sketches. And I gave him this sketch, which was of him taking a kitten for a walk on a lead, and then the kitten gets cross, chases a bird or something, and pulls him away. Now, that's kind of reminiscent, because fortunately, he said, bless him, he said, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that, you know, I'm just not fit enough. And so he turned it down, and we developed it from there. That's how Hit and Kong, Kit and Kong started. Right. Yeah, well, it, it, it was, sorry. It wasn't a real kitten. <laughs> no, in that it isn't when you walk. <laughs> but the, but the, the but the you know the, the the it's it's great it's great watching that real kitten having to attack tiny <laughs> models of you yeah. and then we cut to the yeah. we cut to the to the real I mean the, it's there was a was a time when uh, we were in the studio hanging from wires on that tandem oh, damn. and suddenly it broke and I was caught by my wrist and blood pouring out of my wrist and they, they took me upstairs to the nurse who was French. <laughs> and I tried to explain to them that I was on a bicycle in the air with a giant kitten attaching me, and my grand char a souris a solo bicyclette <laughs> <laughs> did not appeal. She said, "Piss off." <laughs> <laughs> that, that image is sort of that image is such an instantly recognisable thing, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's people all over the place. If you go to the post office tower, you can buy mints in a box with the kitten cog on the top. <laughs> And plugging it for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we were kind of pioneering things like uh, blue screen yeah. at the time because yeah. it was in the early days of colour television, so blue screen was only just coming in. Mm. And some of that was film with uh, what they called axial front projection. Say that again. Uh, so it was all, yeah. What was it? Axial front projection. It wasn't a real cat that big. <laughs> I knew it was going to disillusion me. Yeah. A person we must mention is Jim Franklin, who was yes. the original editor, film genius, who right. worked all the way through. He was originally just an editor, and then he became super producer or whatever. Yeah. But he was still doing the same job, and he did so much of that stuff. Mm. We were very lucky. The BBC at the time had very good visual effects departments, wardrobe, makeup. Yeah. And they, they worked there only for less money, but they were much I think, And I think... This is the most satisfying thing, sounding a bit sentimental, I think, for people who do a show, is that most of the people, the technicians, etc., etc., really liked being on the show. You know, it was really mm. satisfying to say, oh, I hope I'm on the next series. Or, well, the, except I, the, the, the guy who was doing the designs, it was so exhausted at the end of one, he said, I'm yeah. terribly sorry, the last, that's the last one I do. Next time he was queuing up to get <laughs> onto it. But they must, they must have been asked to basically do a lot of things for the first time. Yes. Well, that hadn't really been done before. <laughs> when we wrote it, we figured out ways of doing things ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And said, you know, we can do that with a blue screen or do that with whatever. Um, so they couldn't say it can't be done. Yeah. But usually they came up with a better way of doing it, and, and that's what they enjoyed, was well, taking on the challenge. Well, also, given that, given that your backgrounds for a previous decade were in, were in radio, <laughs> it makes a real leap towards thinking about how do these things work visually. It's not a dialogue-heavy... Thing. It's oh, just, it's, look, yeah. It goes in hand in hand with the images and action. And Funny all. enough, that some of the episodes I like most, like the end, are just in one room. Yeah. But, but we were driven to that. But you're right. Yeah. No. I, well, um, I, yeah. I was going to ask about that one. And that's an, that's an interesting one. I mean, it's got, it's it's got a feeling of a piece of, a, of absurd theatre. You know, at the end where you're trapped in the one room by the uh, by the concrete. And of course, for for a lot of sitcoms, that's 
a stylistic exercise now, isn't it? They'll do one in every series where yeah. people are in a car together. For you, reading between the lines, it was because you'd spent everything on... That was giant right. Kittens, That's right. <laughs> he had to, like... That's exactly right. It was. <laughs> and you do you recall in that, in that episode, there's a lot of jokes about saying the Queen will never give you OBEs and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, she's going to... She's not, she's not going to sling an OBE around your neck, Tim says at one point to <laughs> else. And now I think you all have OBE. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah that, I, 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 I won't be able to risk this. He's got it on. Incidentally. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> my, of course, my, mine isn't as shiny as Tim and Graham's because mine's much older. <laughs> <laughs> I got mine a long time ago for, for services to conservation, and they got there as well. It was a couple of weeks ago, I think. Was <laughs> <laughs> for services that to hasn't arrived comedy, yet. comedy, comedy, yes. Light comedy. entertainment. Light entertainment, yes. Light entertainment, yes. We did used to despise the OBs because they were being given to 23 year olds who'd done nothing at all. Yes. That's why we used to sneer. And now when we were offered it, we went, thank you very much. <laughs> I've never seen anyone wearing one. Bloody point in having it if you don't. <laughs> Rush it about, flash it about. I can I ask these two a question? I don't think I ever have. Did you get the Queen or did you get a lesser royal? <laughs> well, it depends what you mean by a lesser royal. Oh, you know what I mean. There's nobody lesser than the Queen. Did you get the Queen? Princess Anne gave me mine. Oh, I see. And she okay. said, and uh, Princess, when, yeah, I don't even want to know. No, no. <laughs> What she said, I'm very pleased to see you here. Oh. I, I told what my friend John Naismith that, and he said, well, she probably says that to everyone she doesn't recognise. <laughs> Tim, was yours Princess Anne? No, mine was Charlie Boyce. Charlie Boy. Who offered to marry me. When we did, there was... <laughs> <laughs> Not then. Not then, no, but no. earlier on, I told him we were doing this thing about Rolf Harris and the Queen saying, who will rid me of this plague of Rolf Harris's? We'll have my son, Charles, and I told him about it. I'll, I'll do that, if you like, I'll turn... Then wiser counsels prevailed. <laughs> That's mother's for you. And he didn't do it. No. But, but I, I, I've got to say, but I had the Queen, of course. <laughs> and when you say had the Queen... I had the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a mem memorable occasion, because we were all standing outside, as I'm sure you did, people who were going to get whatever they're going to get, and inside you can hear the band playing, and I thought... I thought that was um, um, records or something like that. You know, she says, can I have my latest album? I like that. Can I play that? Uh, so, in fact, I, I stepped up to her at the end of the queue to the strains of There Is Nothing Like a Dane. <laughs> extracts from South Pacific. And then I made the worst, worst faux pas ever, because the, the chap who, whatever they call the equerry or something like that, has told you how to do it, said, whatever you do, whatever you do, don't turn your back on Mom, oh, Her Majesty, that's Mom, you know. Don't turn your back on it. OK, no, no, that's fine, I won't. So, of course, the inevitable happened, because I go up there and she's there, and I go, um, yes, Mom, and uh, she says, uh, I expect you like your birds just as much as I enjoy my dogs. That's what she said. I said, yes. <laughs> and then she, she put the thing on, put the thing around my neck, and I said, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> A deft Fred Astaire... Well, extra thing, turn. I misheard you, what you said there, and I thought he kind of said that. I thought you said the Queen said to you, I expect you enjoy your birds as much as I enjoy my dwarfs. Dogs, yeah. Uh, no, okay, no. let's. They're Mother auditioning Fu right now. Mother Food <laughs> Papers was another one I really liked watching again. Uh, Ecky Thump, the uh, the Lancashire Kung Fu, and there was lo lots of great visual references to the martial arts films of the time. <laughs> Were you, were, you, were you out and about seeing those for references? Did you go and look at them, and, or was that from the director? We, we just knew about them anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. we just knew they were there, really, you know. There's also yeah. a bit in that that's very like a Kurosawa, um, where it goes to black and white, and there we see the banners... Yeah. Flying, oh, yes, and uh, marching to... Yeah. 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 And again, did those sort of ideas come from you, or were they things that were suggested by directors? No, they, they came from us. I think they're probably in the script, yeah. 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 
Yeah. The, the, the best moments I remember, that, and Tim will remember even more, with the, the flat hats. And this was a perfect example of working with the costume department, because we go in there and we say, uh, this bit, and we had a meeting on every script, they go through every detail. And I said, um, it says big flat hats here. And they said, yes, that's right, big flat hats, you know, not a little one, big flat hats. <laughs> and they come back in <laughs> next day and they've got one about this big, you know. They said, that's okay, but it's not big enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you make a bigger one? Really big, how big? It's that big. And it took about four or five days before they finally came in with something <laughs> that big. And uh, we, well, I, we all wore it eventually. So. We, did, we did kill someone. I know, yeah. You killed oh, oh. Al Alexander Mitchell of King's Lynn. <laughs> laughed, <laughs> laughed to death at it. Right. <laughs> his, his wife told the vicar at the, the, that she would like to write a letter to the goodies to thank them for making her husband's last few hours happy. It's love. Oh, yeah. And then the press came on, on a recording day. How do you feel about this man dying? Yeah. Oh. Well, but I had, isn't what happened that he... he his, heart, his heart attack was on the way, anyway. Yeah, it was yeah. merely brought forward a bit by... Uh, <laughs> and I don't think... It he, wasn't a personal attack. Talk him down, no. I think. <laughs> Yeah. No but consolation. <laughs> but you know what? That will have become a treasured anecdote now in that fact. Really will. Yeah, it'll, be a, yeah. it'll be a great thing to have, to have a... That, it'll take the curse off the tragedy that's attached to him watching people hitting each other with black pudding. <laughs> <laughs> here's, go on, sorry. Here's, here's, what, here's an interesting thing. I don't know how you feel about this. All, all this stuff's out there. It's all going to be out there. It's great that uh, the release of the, all the series together will give it a context. But there are things like, for example, the 1975 South Africa episode, where the intent is obviously to satirise apartheid. But what that will look like, out of context in it, is there, is, there are language and images which, to, to a modern audience, will appear yeah. like something you wouldn't do now that would be mm. problematic. Now, I, know, I understand what the intent is, and the intent is to satirise apartheid, but it still does have you blacked up, for example. Yeah, no, I... And we also... There was another programme which I think was even more satirical, because obviously that was the point, uh, about the black and white minstrel show. Right, right. And we turn into minstrel of all, of all colours, as yeah. it were. And, um... And, of course, what we, what we were saying is, could you believe that there is a black and white minstrel show still yeah. going? And in the same with the South African programme, it was basically... Um, criticising the South African police in yeah. particular, who were getting very violent. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when we got called in, I'm sure the guys do too, when we got called in before the beak, as it were, and he said, no, no, I don't think we can put this one out. And we said, why not? Why not? Um, is it... Uh, well, you, the South African police, you're being a bit unfair on them. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> It wasn't the problem you thought you were going to be. No, no, quite. No, and they, so we, we, we were very canny. We said, uh, he said, no, 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 I don't mean that. It's just, it's not as funny as you normally do. Not as funny, you know. So we said, all right, all right. Um, give us till tomorrow. We'll come back with another half a dozen, a dozen jokes. And you can have a look at that. And if you can still say, that's not funny then we'll argue again. And to be fair to them in a way, or maybe they were being not quite so fair to us, I don't know, but they then passed it. And yeah. So it went out on a, a sort of censored version, but with added material. Right. You're, you're right, though. Nowadays, there are certain things that we did in it which we were sending up, which we'd be embarrassed, call, talking nignogs yeah. and things yeah, like yeah. that. But things like go through the door and turn white, or things like that. I, yeah, I, but, I mean, the, the thing is that that language was in the currency of the every yeah. day. Then, and that, that's sort of what people forget that it was yeah. um that and so i, I mean somebody somebody recently said you couldn't make that show now yeah to which the reply is you wouldn't have to yeah yeah you wouldn't have to <laughs> that's a real that's right. that's right. that's right. in the last week i watched an episode that i'd never seen before that i think is a hidden gem of the uh of the goodies canon i'm sure there's loads out there um now that the entire collection's been put out Punky Business from 1977, <laughs> which will take some decoding for the modern viewer, in as much as a lot of it is based around a parody of Rock Follies, the short lived <laughs> women's rock <laughs> drama series. Which it's probably to... unintelligible, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, it's, also, it's also a parody of the idea that um, 
that uh, punk was the latest of a number of fads and that it, what it did was inverted conventional norms of what entertainment yeah. should be. But it seems to have given you the excuse to do a sort of Fellini-esque, mad, ep carnival-like episode. And there's so many brilliant costumes in it, a strange variety act, which is you basically attacking your own genitals with tools. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> The, the, a, uh, the pumpkin, pumpkin headed <laughs> thing. I mean, it's. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> and, and the, the excuse is that it's attached to, oh, this is what punk was like. Can we quote. Like that. Can, we, <laughs> can we quote you with Fellini esque? Oh, no. yeah, <laughs> but it is. It reminded me actually of the, of the sequence in Rome where there's the papal fashion parade. You just get oh, this yeah. odd mm. sequence yeah. of these bizarre dressed characters going to this, um, yeah. to this, this sort of strange carnival esque <laughs> ball. I mean, it's like a, like a surrealist. Film, which is a word that's wasted, I think, surrealist, but that does seem to be have that feel to it. It seemed to have set you free, this idea that you could do a punk thing to just do. I mean, sometimes you just think, <coughs> you just think that would look funny, that would sound mm, funny, yeah. that would be funny, and you don't really think about why. You, know, you must have done that. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> there's, I, I like the fact that you've got Jane Asher in that. She very an yeah. sort of anchors it with a brilliant sort of, sort of do proper acting in the yeah. middle of. Loads of pumpkin-headed people. And very unpunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was it, very it, good. You're right. It, it, that's the sort of program that we some, sometimes I got asked about once. We were filming down in Jersey, and um, I heard a band in a, in a pub there and said, could I come and sit in for a bit? And, just, and he said, yeah, of course. And as we were walking across, the guy said, uh, you know that program you do better punk? I said, yeah. He said, um, what are you blokes on? <laughs> what, 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 what are you taking? I said, nothing. He said, ah, oh, come on, come on. <laughs> he simply wouldn't have it, you know, that we were obviously drug-crazed <laughs> <laughs> surrealists. <laughs> If only they knew. <laughs> well, what were you on, if not? No. <laughs> BBC <Alphabet>. Two. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I think That's it was more thirty pounds a week, actually. <laughs> the, la the last individual show I'm going to ask, because I know we've got to, we've got to wrap up the first half soon. I, lo I looked at Bigfoot again, which is the one I remember best from the ITV really? right. series. Did, were you on bigger budgets for ITV for the last series? Or for uh, they were, I think, but that's because everything cost more for oh, ITV. Right. But there seems to be they, more location filming. Yeah, they didn't have the, the same sort of setup that the Beeb had, yeah. so everything had to be subcontracted. They didn't out. have their own internal staff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's and nice that you've paid, you've been so generous towards all the designers and everything that work with you, but the LWT ones, they were, had to be individually contracted, yeah, so yeah. it would cost more. Yeah. We used to make a fuss, you know, and funny enough, I had exactly the same experience in my second life for doing wildlife programmes. Yeah. You get a little team of technical people, the cameraman, soundman, yeah. and a few others, you and know. And the BBC have their own aviary. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. <laughs> Silly boy. <laughs> But, so, but it, it did look more, it looked more, it looked slicker than the... I think that was, yeah. I, I think I agree, and I think we were... That wasn't an ITV one, was it? Yeah. Bigfoot, yeah. It was, you see. I think Bob Spears, God rest him, who sadly died, I think it was last year, um, was our producer, who I think was... Perhaps not as inventive as Jim Franklin, but he was... He had an eye for film mm. as much as just putting sequences together, tape-wise, you know, and comedy-wise. So I, 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 I feel most of that ITV series actually looks better somehow, you know. Yeah, it's very good. Well, yeah, and, and Bigfoot, yeah, we... I mean, they, they're not exotic locations, but they're very no. good locations, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. It was Brick and Beacons, actually. Yeah. The last thing I'm going to ask right. about is, obviously, in that period, if you were a, a fan of comedy or film or anything, you, you experienced it in the moment, in the cinema, or as it was broadcast on television, and then it went away. You weren't going to see... There was no VHS. There certainly weren't DVDs. There wasn't YouTube. And so you, you were often very reliant for your sort of fandom on the ephemera that surrounded the programmes, and the Goodies mm -hmm. books were amazingly detailed bits of work. Um, yeah. Well, they were. I mean, I used to, I know, I used to, I used to <laughs> pour over it. Because every... They were like... They were quite like a punk rock cut-up collage yeah, yeah. taste. Sort of. what, what was your... What, at what point did you sign those off? Were you involved in the layout and design? Totally, yeah. We, we, we had a sort of goodies annual produced yeah. by the 
sort of commercial company that produced the Blue Peter annual and everything. Else. And that, that was so embarrassingly <laughs> awful. Yeah. Terrible. We said, right, if we do another book, we're going to write it all and have as much control as possible, which is what we did from then onwards. Mm. Uh, the Goodies File, I think, was the first one, wasn't it? Mm. I think, for, for, fortunately, if I may say so, Graham is a particularly good artist and I'm quite a bad artist, but nevertheless can do enough. I can't do, do any some of, of the illustrations. I just do the Tim funny can't stuff. do anything. You do the cutting you out. <laughs> He's a very good just reader. Just pretty. <laughs> <laughs> we but actually yeah, were we... hoping to make a film and we were promised and we actually wrote one of them, which was the making of the Goodies Disaster movie. But it was actually meant to be leading towards a movie. And it was paid for by the people who were going to do the film, and then they said, no, sod it. And then you, but then you were left with the, with the book. <laughs> yes. Which, so yeah. it's, a, it's a film tie-in book, but the film never happened. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Actually, we wrote a script, didn't we, of the actual film? We did. I, yeah. I've tried to blank that fact, but yes. Yeah. So there's yeah. a draft of, the fi of a film script of the design somewhere. I've got it, but I won't sell it to anybody. <laughs> unless they make it worth my while. <laughs> <laughs> will, you, will you sit and watch the... Uh, is it 76 episodes? <laughs> will you sit, will, is, is it something you'll keep? I should be running at the time next yeah. to it, yes, watching yeah. it. No, I, well, I don't know. It's one of those things, it's rather sad if you watch yourself on television. So you, I sort of get my grandchildren's, perhaps you'd like to see this, would you? I, there's me watching it. And they go, I'm bored. Oh, well, <laughs> well I've, been, I've, had, I've had these on at home all the time, right, lately, and my seven-year-old, it's, it's really interesting. Watching you know, because they're particularly with the slapstick stuff, because they're used to seeing things that look faked because they've got CGI in them or whatever. And she's that's it's hilarious. She's astounded by it because of the <laughs> levels of danger that. What a <laughs> bright, bright girl this yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> but um, well, yeah. So it's, not, it's something you're, you're you're not uncomfortable about watching them all again or revisiting them. Uh, some <laughs> I, some I probably won't watch. I think the, the later on it is, when you, at the time, you'd watch it and think, oh, we wanted to film that, but it rained, and you say, so you think it's of all the negatives. Now, I'm amazed. Yeah, yeah. These young men, what can they do? We might... <laughs> I think one might be reassessing some of them, and we have had some of them down the years, but along the lines of one that you thought was really good, and you look at it and think, oh, God, that's awful, isn't it? And equally the other way around. Yeah. And you think, that was pretty crap, and then you watch it think... That was really awful. It was really good. <laughs> set him up for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think the worst image I have is the funky giver, us in dungarees. I'm still in dungarees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> what, I, what I love about the, uh, about the Top of the Pops and the, the pop music appearances is Bill's obvious delight. <laughs> it's what he really wants to do. And Graham's clear discomfort. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was holding back. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't want to show them up with my... Cos I could have cut some shapes, but I didn't want to <laughs> show them up with my fancy disco moves, you know. Look, Perhaps I'm... we could see a few of them this evening. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to bring this bit to uh, a close, so please thank Graham, Bill and Tim.